Hello, welcome to the AIF Observatory. Come on in, I'll show you around, but watch your step because it's still under construction. Come on in. Welcome to the Astro and Focus Observatory. Thank you for stopping by today. Hopefully you'll enjoy this quick tour and overview of the observatory in its current state. I said before, watch your step because it's under construction. I started construction of the observatory in May of 2022. I finalized the first phase of the construction when I ran out of daylight and warm weather in October, early November of 2022. I made sure that the roof was completely sealed up, no water was going to get in, and they would reliably open and close throughout the winter. However, it wasn't without its challenges for the first winter. We'll get into that in a little bit. Please consider subscribing. It helps this channel grow and it encourages me to keep making these videos as well as keep putting out more live stream star parties. Hopefully we'll see you at one of those star parties. They're really exciting. You might learn something. So you may be asking why I ran solar power for this observatory instead of just a main lines feed. Well, the observatory is in a semi-remote location. While I do have access to it from my home and the observatory is located on my property, it's not always accessible. The road, whenever it's wet to get down to the observatory, does routinely wash out. And it would have been thousands of dollars to run a line either from my home down to the observatory or to have the power company putting another pole in and bring that feed here. On the south side of the observatory, I do have two 270 watt panels that have proven reliable enough in less than one day, full sun can charge up the battery bank to full. The solar panels come in here to a Midnight Classic charge controller that feeds down to the battery bank. For any 110 AC voltage needs, I do have a thousand watt inverter. Typically this is only used for the white lighting in the observatory, as well as running a vacuum cleaner or operating the roof motor. Other items on this distribution panel here, I have some fuse blocks, some DC-DC voltage converters that allow and maintain a safe voltage for the various equipment that is on the mount and the telescope. A network switch for all the networking needs. Now I also did not run a ethernet cable from my home down to the observatory. Everything is linked wirelessly through a Ubiquiti nano beam. It allows a point-to-point -point wireless connection over the range of several kilometers. It's proven to be very reliable and I have used those in the past. Over here are the relay switches that allow remote operation as far as turning on and off devices on the telescope and the mount itself. This also is set up currently to cycle the roof controller to allow the roof to close or open. The smaller web relay is a backup for the roof. Just in case the first one would fail, I have redundancy to close the roof. I have had several problems with this uh, digital loggers relay with the web interface crashing and sequence generator pro not being able to send a command to close the roof at the end of a imaging session via SSH. I am looking into either purchasing a ready to go package or building one from scratch that'll integrate with ASCOM running off of an Arduino board. Being it's ran on solar, what happens if it's cloudy for a day or two or three? Well, with the battery bank system that I have currently, in an idle state, it will maintain a safe level of charge for about seven days. Anything beyond that, I have to make sure that I get down here and hook up a generator to a battery charger to let it top off the batteries. I have a 15 amp charger and a small thousand watt inverter generator that sips on fuel and will top off the batteries from half state within a few hours. So up top here is where I have the gate motor mounted. Now I wasn't planning on motorizing this roof until summer of 2023 this year. However, I came across a great deal on this gate motor and figured, well, why not do it? Even if it's temporary. I do plan on building a false wall here to have a warm room, even though I don't know how much time I'll be spending down here, unless I wanna do some visual observing or just hang out. 
What it will do is it will help keep the walls from racking as well as give me a nice area for storage. Right now, this back part of the observatory is kind of just storage. But then again, it's still under construction. The observatory is eight foot by 14 foot and the roof opens up eight foot by eight foot area. The other six by eight area is designated for that warm room or storage. So there's multiple ways you can open and close the roof. I can use this little keychain that came with the gate motor. I can go down here to the web relay and cycle the relay manually, or as well as log into the web server or send an SSH command to the relay. So why don't we give it an open and see how it works out. As you can see, it opens up fairly quickly. It only takes a couple seconds and it's nice, smooth and quiet. Now, even though it is cloudy, it is awful bright today. So definitely getting some charge into my battery bank, but it's a little bright, especially after getting used to the dimness of the observatory with the roof closed. Plus I have a heater going in here right now and it's letting all the heat out really quick. So let's close the roof back up. First winter at the AIF Observatory has not been without its challenges. One stands out in particular. You may notice on the front of the telescope I have a flip flat, which is great for closing up at the end of an imaging session to protect the front lens, as well as integrating your flat frames automatically. Whenever I started building the observatory, it was definitely on my list of things that I'd like to purchase to keep my gear safe. However, it was on back order. One day this winter, I took a peek through my camera just to make sure everything in the observatory was good and there was no leaks. Now, just a few days before, I was, had the telescope operating. Everything was running fine. And what do I see? I see a bird's nest right on the front objective. As you can imagine, I was devastated. Now, thankfully, the birds were kind enough to use a nice soft moss up against the front lens and the lens didn't suffer any damaging. That really pushed me to look again for a flip flat. Thankfully, I found a user on cloudy nights that just so happened to have one for sale and I immediately contacted them and purchased it. No more bird problems for me on the main objective. Now, what caused that? Well, I never had a chance to seal up and put trim in the brush strips where the roof meets the walls. Didn't think I'd have a problem in the middle of winter with birds coming in here. I thought if anything, there might be some mice that might crawl around and try to nest somewhere, but I never thought I'd have birds. I've heard other people have problems with bats, but I don't think that'll be a problem here. But it's something to remember in this hobby. Always expect the unexpected, whether it's with your equipment or whether it's with something you're observing. Some of you may have been wondering what equipment I have here at the AIF Observatory. In a future video, I'll go over a deep dive of all the equipment and pieces that make this setup complete. But for now, a quick overview. I'm running a Stellarview 102 millimeter APO refractor sitting on top of a Los Mondi G11 mount. The camera that I'm using is a ZWO ASI 1600MC Pro, which is a one-shot color camera that I've had for many years now. You can check out a previous video of how I migrated from a SLR camera for photography over to a dedicated astrophotography camera. I'll link that up in the corner here. Also, let me know in the comments below if you think I should upgrade from the one-shot color camera to a mono camera with a filter wheel setup. It's something I've been thinking about, but I may need that extra push to take that leap. Thank you again for stopping by. Hopefully you enjoyed this quick tour of the AIF Observatory and all the pieces that make it whole. There'll be plenty more videos coming from the AIF Observatory this summer because there's plenty of maintenance and construction that still needs to be completed. Once again, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel grow, but more importantly, it encourages me to keep putting these videos out and making the live stream star parties. Hopefully you'll be able to catch one of the next live stream star parties. Until then, clear skies.